Hello all, Pastor Franklin here. And I'm going to continue today to talk about uh, some issues of unity and reform. Not only am I going to talk about it today, but I am going to continue to talk about it. I don't, and I don't know how many people are going to be listening. Uh, but I, I post these videos on Facebook, on my YouTube channel, which is simply Franklin Ruff at YouTube, on uh, Twitter. And I, I, if I can just get one or two people to listen, if I can get just one or two people to start a dialogue, then I feel what I am doing is worth the time that I'm contributing to it. Now, I want you to understand something about me. Uh, what this is not meant to be, it's not going to be a political discussion. I, I'm not trying to, to talk about choosing sides because if each of us is going to our corner, our, our political corner or our ideological corner, uh, then we're not going to ever get anything done. Because again, we're not going to be listening to what the other person is saying. We're not going to be trying to understand where they are coming from. And so you're not going to get that from me. What I want to talk about today uh, is two things. One, I want to talk about some comments that were made uh, a little under a week ago, I think maybe about five days ago, last Sunday, uh, by the former uh, first black uh, Miss Alabama. Her name is uh, Kaylin Chapman James. And uh, these comments, <laughs> they, they, they've been all over the place and, and we're going to talk about the comments themselves. I'm going to actually show you the video clip and then we're going to have, I'm going to talk about the comments and talk about where we should be coming from uh, in terms of what is being said and, and helping to understand how we can look at this situation. And we're going to also be honest about what that, those comments did. And second, I want to talk about um, the town hall, which took place last night, uh, called The President and the People, and, and where I stood on that. And so, the first thing I want to do is basically show you this clip. I want to show you the clip. Uh, I warn you, um, it, it's going to be upsetting for some uh, to hear what Ms. James had to say if you haven't seen it yet. And then we're going to come back and talk about it. Okay, here's the clip. Hi, Facebook. Um, I'm just reaching out to everybody because I'm just leaving church. And um, I prayed a lot about everything that's happened this week. And I can't stop replaying the image of these men being killed in my mind. And my heart weeps. But I think more than anything, I'm dealing with a bit of guilt because... because I don't feel I don't feel sad for the officers that lost their lives and I know that that's really not my heart I value I value human life and I want to feel sad for them but I can't help but feeling like the shooter was a martyr and I know it's not the right way to feel because nobody deserves to lose their lives. And I know that those police officers had families and people who love them and that they didn't deserve to die. But I'm so torn up in my heart about seeing these men, these black men being gunned down in our community that I can't help. <laughs> I can't help but feel like I wasn't surprised by what the shooter did to those cops and I think a lot of us feel the same way and I know that it's not right and I definitely don't condone violence but I'm sick of this and I'm sad and I'm hurt and maybe some of you have some, some insight or some comfort or words to offer because I know that the people who know me know my heart I definitely do not condone violence against innocent people, but I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this and something has to be done, period. I don't know what else to say. It's a lot to deal with and I know I'm not the only one feeling like this. So I'll be anxious to see what some of you 
how you feel and what you're dealing with. Okay, let's keep it real on this. Again, what Miss James said, what she said was upsetting and what she said was wrong, especially to anyone who has had a police officer in their family and has lost that person. That is painful to hear, especially for the de families of the Dallas police officers. That's painful to hear. That I, her saying that, I cannot feel sorry for those police officers. But now let's step back, okay? And especially those of you who are believers, those of you who are Christians, understand something about what's happening here. Because what Miss James is doing here is exactly what we should do as Christians. Because what is happening is she, she realizes within her heart that she is feeling something that she should not feel. She is realizing that there needs to be a change that takes place within her. And and she's trying to work through that and the fact of the matter is that all of us have had times in our lives where we struggle with that and she isn't the only one who feels that way and on the other side of the aisle i guarantee you there are people who have lost loved ones in the line of duty that have a hard time relating or being able to feel anything for someone that is that that may be a potential criminal that has lost their life to a police officer now the fact of the matter is even if that person is is a criminal even if that person is someone who the police officer had to defend themselves from we must also admit that a life has been lost and that is a reason for grief the fact that that life has been lost and that being said let's 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 go back to miss james what she said was wrong what she said was hurtful but the process that she is trying to go through at this point, she says she's just got out of church and she knows she shouldn't feel this way and she doesn't want to feel this way, and, but she does. And she's trying to work her way through it. Now let me get up on a soapbox for a minute and, 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 and discuss what the problem with this whole situation is. The fact of the matter is that the fact that, that Miss James is trying to work through this, that's a good thing. The fact that she tried to work through it on Facebook is not. Because the fact is that Facebook is not your therapist. Facebook is not the pastor. She, she said she was in church and, and she's feeling these emotions. What should have happened is she, she's in church, she has a pastor. She should have gone to her pastor and said, hey, you know what, pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this, these feelings. I don't want to because I know I'm better than this. I know that, that those lives are worth something. And, and I want to be able to grieve not only for these men who have been killed by police officers, but by these police officers who was killed by this man. I don't want to see him as a martyr. And so we, we, we want to be careful of the things that we do put out there. I, I put myself in the role of her employer, and after seeing that on Facebook, would I have suspended her? And, and I have to admit, yes, 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 I would have. Uh, because now it's out there in the public sphere. Everybody can see it. Everybody can make their own judgments. And that's the reason that I'm talking about it now, because I know people are making these judgments about her and about what she said. And I'm, I'm just trying to get you to see what is going on with, 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 with her. I'm not saying that her saying it is right, but I am saying that what, that what is right is the fact that she's trying to deal with it. She's wrestling with it, and that is a good thing. But 
the biggest mistake she made and, and that a lot of people make unfortunately with social media is she went out and she tried to use Facebook as her therapist and her, as her pastor and, and, and to try and, 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 and deal with it that way and that was the absolute wrong and I think she knows it now uh, Miss James, I think she knows it now, that that was the wrong way to do it. And so I, I want to move from there to talk about the town hall that took place last night. I'm going to go on record as being one who says that there are some issues and some policies that I would totally disagree with our president on. But when I look at how our president handled the situation last night, there were mixed reviews. Uh, the, the daughter of, um, I don't remember which daughter it is, but of one of the black men that has been killed uh, over the recent years, it, it's it's escaping me, but she she was not at all pleased with what happened last night, and and some others were. Um, is there going to be this great revival and renewal and unity within the nation because of what took place on a one-hour show? No, but it's a good starting point. And as the president is the one who is supposed to set the tone, I was proud of President Barack Obama last night thought that he did a good job of, of expressing the needs and desires of all sides and the responsibilities of all sides. Now again, some, some people, you, you're on this team over here and you're on this team over here and what you're going to say is, no he didn't because you only heard the criticisms of your side and the needs of the other side. But that's not what happened. The president struck a good tone last night. Uh, and he, he, uh, he attempted to move the dialogue forward. And so I, I will say that I, I appreciate that. And I thought that he did a good job with that. Um, as I looked at it, you know, I, I was, I grieved. I, 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 I grieved for Alton Sterling's son. How could you not? That, that boy is without a father now. I, but I also grieved for the mothers of police officers that are, that are standing up and saying, you know, my, my son's a Baltimore police officer who goes out and he's polite and he tries to do his job and then when the Freddie Gray thing happened, he gets hit in the head with a bottle and almost gets a concussion. And you know, I, 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 I understand her trepidation. I understand her fear. I understand the anger also of the people who were sitting in that audience uh, that are the widows of police officers. But here's the deal. Uh, and and I'm, I'm going to say it again. Stop talking past each other, people. Listen. The, the police chief from Milwaukee, he, 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 he hit on a lot of great points in that um, part, of the, part of the issue is that police officers are being asked to do things that police officers shouldn't have to do. Part of the issue is that there is a social history in this country that began with slavery. And we don't like to say that word, but that began with slavery. Slavery ended and we went to Jim Crow. Jim Crow ended and we just went in, in, into a situation where things got better. But is there still a mentality amongst many? that look at people of color as inherently dangerous. All of these are things that in one way or another were said last night. But are we listening? Are we listening? Are we taking it in? 
Or are we just trying to defend our own position? Well, let me tell you something. If you're one of those that's just trying to defend your own position, you are a part of the problem as well. Stop being a part of the problem and become a part of the solution. So just to wrap this up in closing, uh, I, as we look at Ms. James, I just, want you to, I just want you to consider that, yes, what she said was bad. It was very bad. It, it, it was hurtful. But she was trying to work through something. She, she was honestly trying to work through emotions that she didn't want to have. Uh, and, and so just take that into consideration. And, and as we look at the town hall, yes, I, again, I was, I was proud of how the president handled that last night. And can it be a first step, at least? Can it be a first step to us uh, starting to come together as a community? I, I've got some other videos that I'm going to be posting um, later. I'm going to talk about my experience as a black man in America. Um, I uh, talked with a, a, a jailer the other day. I'm going to do a video talking about um, how some of the attitudes that we might have um, even about people who are incarcerated might be a part of the problem. Uh, so look forward to those as well. But I just want to say, let's do this. Let's, let's, um, um, let's start this dialogue and let's fix this problem. And let's do it one community at a time, one group of people at a time, brothers and sisters in Christ, one church congregation at a time.